Welcome back to the Elliot, and we are going to do the last of our series on Starlink. Today we're going to be talking about the performance difference between the high performance dish and the Gen 3. Is there any difference? Is one better than the other? Where should I spend my money? We're going to change the format of this video a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the two dishes. We'll just give you our recommendation. And then for those of you that want more detail on what were the results of that criteria, uh, so you can make your own detailed you know, evaluation which one's better for you, we'll go more in depth on that. But we'll just give you the information up front if you just want an answer and you don't want to watch the whole video. Totally cool with us. Uh, before we get going, if the content is valuable, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe. It helps out the channel and making sure that other viewers like yourself looking for this information are actually able to find it. So jumping into which one has better performance. First of all, we had these two dishes sitting side by side on our hardtop for the last, how long? Four months. Four months. Yeah. It's right about when the Gen 3 came out. I think, I think we actually had one of the first handful of those dishes uh, when they were released. Mm -hmm. And we looked at not only the upload and the download speeds between these two dishes, but we also looked at the outages. Uh, they're fundamentally different dishes. They have a different field of view of the sky. And therefore, it, we needed to look at, at that. If you have a really fast dish, but it's out all the time, it uh, doesn't really matter, no. does it? So those are the two main criteria that we used. When we looked at the upload and download speeds, the download speeds uh, were great. They usually are about 200 meg per second. That's decent. Sometimes they were a little bit faster. Sometimes they were a little bit slower. But they were almost near identical, mm -hmm. regardless when we would test them side by side on our speed testing. The upload speed, not impressive with Starlink right about now. Uh, it is about, well, really 15 or 14 meg per second, up to 20. I've seen as high as 30, but that's pretty rare. It just isn't the strength of Starlink right now for upload, but that is, uh, people mostly download content, so it's a very workable solution between the two of them. But again, pretty much identical between the two. Mm -hmm. Shocking. Uh, when you think about the uh, reliability or outages, uh, I will tell you right off the bat, the Gen 3 had about 50% more outages than the high performance one. But don't freak out because <laughs> when you look at an entire day, the high performance one had about seven outages and the, uh, the Gen 3 had about 10 outages. So when you think about outages and upload and download speeds and reliability, quite frankly, almost identical, which quite frankly is shocking to me. But there you go. One cost $2,500, the other one cost $599. If you were to ask me which one I would buy right now? Gen 3. Gen 3. All right, so there you go. If that's the answer that you needed and you want to move on with your life, go grab a, a Gen 3, get a Trio mount so you can mount it on your hardtop or on a pole. Uh, we have a video of the installation of that up here and you're done. Now, if you're more of a, I'll make my own darn decision, John and Carlin, how did you come to the, these conclusions? Let us show you. So to start with, both of the dishes sat about a meter and a half apart, 17 feet off the water line with zero obstructions. We used, uh, you know, a third party application. So we weren't measuring the speeds within Starlink to make sure we had a good third party evaluation. Mm -hmm. Again, we would just test these side by side uh, when when we were doing upload and download speeds. As you can see from the speeds, uh, latency is about the same. Uh, upload speed of, of you know that that 15 to, to 18, pretty much in that ballpark, and download speeds around 200 is what we generally saw on average. Outages. This is what did kind of surprise me. Uh, the High performance dish has a field of view of 140 degrees of the sky. So it should be able to pick up more satellites and have greater consistency of connection. The Gen 3 has a 110 degree view of the skyline. You would think that uh, it might have more dropouts. And while it does, like I said, uh, it has probably 50%-ish more dropouts. You're still talking about 10 dropouts of you know, a second or less per mm -hmm. day. That's almost indiscernible when you're using these, you know, these internet connections, especially if you're streaming, it has buffering or email or surfing the web, you really can't perceive that stuff. 
if you are using you know, Teams meetings or Zoom or any of those types of solutions, you're going to start seeing like a one second drop. You, you can see that uh, from time to time and it can be disruptive. So in that instance, uh, if you're got to have that, you know, that very, very high uptime, maybe the HP dish makes more sense, but it's fairly indiscernible. Uh, the other thing that I would take into account when I think about performance and uh, the reliability is the, the IP rating, so how waterproof they are. Mm -hmm. The high performance is an IP57, which means it can take you know, a stream of water. It can take a splash. It can get you know water over, blue water over the hard top. Um, you're not going to have a problem. The Gen 3 is a IP67, which means it can be... More wet. More wet. <laughs> More rain. <laughs> More rain. It can actually be held underwater um, for like three minutes, and you know, not deep underwater, but it can be held underwater for, yeah. for three minutes. And so that's a huge difference. Uh, and I think that the Gen 3 is actually better because of that when you think about the reliability side of the, the house on it. Uh, so you know, looking at the data and these types of details, I just, I highly recommend going with the Gen 3. Uh, you know, the HP comes with its own wedge mount, uh, you know, bracket, which gives it a higher wind rating up to 174 miles an hour, which is about hurricane wind rating. That is nice to have that. Mm -hmm. I am not a big fan of having aluminum on a boat and exposed to salt water. Once it gets through the powder coating finish, they tend to start corroding. Mm -hmm. um, dissimilar metals, so if you use stainless to mount it to your hard top, I just don't like aluminum on the outside of our boat. Uh, the Gen 3, you can get a trio mount that can either be flat mounted or you can get a pole mount. Uh, we have a review for the flat mount one we'll put up uh, at the top of this right now. Which um, gives us the higher wind rating. Yeah, I, yeah, we haven't tested that. But the wind rating on the Gen 3 is 60 miles an hour, but it's because it's got a janky mount that it comes from the factory with. The Trio one, which is a 3D printed UV stable uh, mount, I, yeah, I almost tore my finger off trying to get <laughs> to get it disconnected from it once, yeah. and it's just, I mean, it's, it's not coming off. Yeah. I know that people are afraid that 3D printing is terrible and it's going to snap off the top of their van or RV doing 75 miles an hour and yeah, we all have to have our own opinion. I don't think this thing's going anywhere. That's just my personal opinion. It's going to cost you $150, $175 for that mount. Uh, so, okay, so it adds a little bit more to the price of the Gen 3, but it's still way less than $2,500 mm -hmm. for the HP one. So, you know, being users that have had both of them side by side. Gen 3 is the way to go, Yeah, in our opinion. Yeah, I can't recommend the HP. Now, just as a teaser... You're probably wondering, why in the world do you guys have both of these on the top of your boat? Uh, is it just to help out the world and test these? And the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> we do it We do it because these two dishes, they do hiccup, they do drop when we're out of cell range to be able to get data connection and we still work uh, living remotely on, on the Elliot. Uh, you can't have one of these things drop out if we're up in desolation sound, etc. It's a non-starter. It means we've got to go back to a better connection um, than what, what Starlink can give us if it has a dropout. We have two of them side by side, and we join them together and do WAN smoothing with the PEP link uh, router that's that's ruggedized, and we have on the boat. It also has 5G, but sometimes we're out of range of 5G and can't use it. You have to mm -hmm. use two Starlinks, and it combines the the two connections together and it just it has a hundred percent uptime it never goes out it's exactly what we need uh, to be able to work remotely that's why we have those two uh, down in the comments if it's interesting to you what the heck is pep link and how do you, you do an installation and why would you do that uh, go ahead and write down there if it's interesting to you we can do uh, a couple videos on that if it's not well then don't write anything and then we'll move on with more cool stuff like one year review of having fins on the boat to stabilize it or one year review on our water maker or I don't know. Day in the life. Boat tour. We should do a boat tour. We should. Yeah. It's overdue. Alright, we'll do a boat tour. That's what we'll do. Hope you guys are all having a great week. Hope this was valuable. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like.
Peace.